Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, we're going to be showing you how we pour a pretty big basement floor over the wall. Uh, we're using Marshalltown Shockwave Vibrascreed today, so you get to see that. That's a gas-powered vibrating screed. That thing works really, really good. Marshalltown makes really good tools. So if you haven't, I'll have a link for that down uh, below. If you haven't checked that out yet, you can check that out down there. Now the access wasn't real great on this thing. We only had a couple spots we could get to, so we got to use our chutes for this. And you can see we got a six mil vapor barrier down. We're pouring a four inch thick concrete floor. Most of the floors we pour in basements like this are four inches thick. And we will use in the middle of the summer, we'll use a 3000 PSI mix. And then as the temperatures get a little chillier in the fall or early in the spring, we'll use a 3500 PSI mix and then sometimes a 4,000 when temperatures are really cold. Uh, it's just me, Darren, Tia, and Abby today. Luke's out. He was uh, out today. He was sick. So just the four of us getting this thing poured today. I'm also going to show you how we finish this at the end. So you'll see us power trialing this. You'll see us sawing some expansion cuts in this. So you get to see the whole package on this one. But I really wanted to show you just how well that, that power screed works from uh, Marshalltown. So... You're going to see us screed the whole floor with that thing today. Now we're getting this first truck dumped out. Generally, when we pour a basement floor like this, we like to get most of the first truck, if not all the first truck dumped right out, get him out of the way, get the second truck in place, and let him start mixing. Because once we get it dumped out, get our pad shot, it doesn't really take us very long to screed something like this, as you'll see. So it's just a matter of, getting the concrete in place getting it spread out getting it close to grade and then going from there that usually what takes the longest for us we like we really like those shoots that's an eight foot shoot we carry around we use probably that one the most and then the other one's a 12 foot shoot and then i got a 16 footer that's still on the truck that we didn't think we needed today and then this thing down here at the bottom right with the, that yellow hoe on it that's a boot we're going to hook that on the truck shoots too and you'll see how that helps us get the concrete in place without it splattering too bad when we need it. Now Tia, Tia works for me still. She's my daughter. She's worked for me for three years. Abby, Abby worked one year for us. They're both in college, um, so they're just working in the summers. But they were really good workers. They, you know, there's nothing, nothing I could say that. Uh, nothing bad I could say about them they uh, I would hire them again in a minute and you know obviously T has worked for me multiple years so she she know really knows what she's doing now I'm getting my pad shot right there and that's the level that we're going to screed to as well as the outside on the outside we snap a chalk line we use the laser level to shoot grades out there then we just snap a chalk line we mag our pads to that and we like striking our pads like this by hand with a 14 foot screed that way we know the, the grade is perfect. There's no humps or dips or anything in the pads. And then, then it's just basically watching the ends of the screed here as we go. That thing runs really smooth. I mean, the gas-powered screeds are a little heavier than the battery ones that we've used in the past, like MBW Screed Deben. This one's a little bit heavier than that. It has, has more vibration, so it's... It works really good on, on drier, stiffer concrete, I would say. But all in all, this is a really good screed. It's a little bit heavier than the, the battery-powered screed demon I've, I got. But not too bad. Maybe 10 pounds heavier. See, it didn't take very long to get that bay down at all. Probably took about you know, a minute and a half to screed that part. So we'll get the first truck all dumped out. So he went just about halfway. Um, we got as much as we could possibly put on these two trucks. It figured right about 21 yards, and that's what these guys hold. Two ten and a half yarders. So we're hoping that <laughs> we're hoping that we make it and don't run a wheelbarrow short. Sun's just coming up over the edge now. You can see how nice and shiny and bright the sun's gonna be today. This thing's gonna it's gonna cure up and dry really, really fast on us. So we're gonna we're gonna be power trialing this in no time, and it's actually gonna be quite an early day when we get done. It's a 
good shot of the whole foundation right there. We gotta, we're going to come back and do the garage on another day. But we need to get the house done. The guys, the builders, you know, they wanted to stop putting the floor package on this. And we always like getting the floors in before they start decking them over. It's, it's, there's not, I mean, the access really isn't any good. There's no windows in this thing or anything. So it just makes the whole project go much easier if we can get the floor in first. And then they kind of want to set their lolly columns on the floor too. You can see there's a, there is a concrete footing there underneath in the middle for the lolly column pads to sit on. So they'll just they'll just anchor the lolly columns right to the floor. They okay, were done with that 12 now, so now we can just use the eight. So Darren goes back and he gets the edges all mag, while the three of us continue to dump that truck out. We're gonna dump out just a little bit more, and then. There we go, we're starting to screed it now. You can see how we we strike our pads and get it all prepped for the vibra screed. That way we can just go and it doesn't take very long. The good thing about the you know the vibra screed is it it kind of vibrates the aggregate down a little bit too as you go, so you don't need to do anything other than just run the bull float over it, usually once down and once back, and it leaves it a really good smooth bull float finish. Yeah, you can see me picking that up. That's not too, too heavy. Probably about 40 pounds right there with everything. The key really is, is the two rakers, man. If they can keep that concrete just where you need it, just a little bit high, then you can move right along really fast and you don't have to worry about having any dips or humps. You can see how smooth that comes out after I screed it. Nice and level. So I mean, if you were thinking of getting a a power screed, you know, and you didn't really know which one to get, you can't really go wrong if you get this one. Um, you can't really go wrong if you get one at MBW. MBW has the has the gasser like this, and they also have a battery one. Both of them work really good, so I use them a lot. There's some other ones out there too. You know, no, I haven't had any of those companies really want to ship me one to try it for you guys so I can review it. So if uh, any of them are watching and listening here and you want me to try one on one of my jobs, you know, just send me one. We'll try it out for you and we'll let everybody know how it works. You can see how that boot works. That works really nice. You can have different lengths of the boot on there if you need it. That rubber that goes on that tremmy is, you know, that stuff's pretty inexpensive. So we'll get the rest of this screeded. You see here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this bay up with a power screed, and then I'll, I'll finish up by the ladder just with a little hand screed, and then we're gonna jump right into the finishing. We probably do at least one of these every single day, you know, when, especially when Luke's back. We'll do one big one or we'll do a couple small ones every single day. And I mean, we just, we just line them up. We're lucky enough to have a really good clientele that they just call and say it's ready, put it on the list, and then they just wait for us to get it done. That's, that's pretty nice of our clientele. Yeah, you can see how we get that out. It's not too, too bad. We'll wash that right up like that. We'll leave the blade right on it and put it right back on the truck just like that. Get it ready for the next day. I'm just going to work my way out right there. That's it. That's as simple as that. We'll drop the ladder down, climb out, and then I'm going to reach over here with a come along or a rake and just, you know, kind of float those, those little holes in that the ladder left right there. And then now we're just waiting for it to cure up so we can put the power trial down on it. So on today, where that sun's hitting that wall over that, that actually cures up pretty fast. It doesn't take long. So we'll jump down there with the ladder. We'll go around and get all our edges floated out. And then you can see how nice this crane works on the back of our trucks. 
I got a, I'll have a link for that down there in the in the description too, guys. If you want to check out those cranes? I mean, for you guys doing floors like us, if you don't have one of them cranes on your trucks, <laughs> I know I know you're muscling that thing in and out because we used to too. I've even had to take them out by myself, put them down and, and take them out by myself, and I know that's no fun, especially them them four footers. That's a four footer there from Marshalltown. That that goes really nice too. That'll cover a lot of ground really fast. So Darren's getting that floated up. I believe he's got combo blades on this. Generally, we'll use float blades and finish blades. But when, when you first get these trials, we just got this. They come with combos. And a combo will do kind of both. Typically, we like to float it and then let it set up for a little bit more and then hit it with the finish blades, you know, three or four times till it's done. With combos, you don't have to do that. You just keep going over and over it with the same blades and just slightly crank them up a little higher on each hit. Now, you'll, you'll see here in a sec, we're going to be fighting the shade a little bit on this, this front wall. And that's, actually, you can see a little bit on the back wall, too. And that stuff doesn't set up. It doesn't cure up anywhere near as fast as the stuff in the sun. So sometimes, sometimes you got to get down there and just hit that shade part by hand. You don't really want to run that power trial in there if that's really soft still. That's a good shot of that. That's pretty easy to run once you get the hang of the, the movement of the trial. It's pretty easy to run. So now I'm going back up with a little one. I got We got a bunch of Whitemans too. And actually, we got some MBWs also, so, but I'm using the little Whiteman today. That's a 30-inch trial. And I'm just going back up on that, that edge that was in the sun, making sure that's not dry too fast and you know, just getting it laid down. We call this hitting it with a lay-down blade, so I'm hitting it with finish blades now. Yeah, you can see Darren over there now. He's hitting that part in the shade by hand, getting that all nice and down. We, we generally like to let that get good and hard before we actually get in there with a power trial. So up there where I am right now, that, that edge is, is pretty much done. It's shined out. And then you can see Darren's away over here on the other edge. He's just hitting it for the first time. We'll go around our edges each time like that and make sure the edges come out just as smooth as where, where the power trial hits it. Yeah, now it's my turn to go up in there in the shade. So I'm, I'm hand troweling that out now, getting it nice and smooth. Darren's finishing up the rest. So most of that now is going to be done after this hit. And then we're going to show you how we snap chalk lines, snap this out and get it sawed. I'm going to just take that little piece out right there with a big machine. While Darren's coming down with that other pot. That other pot's shining right out. And then we'll show you how we get this big machine out of here without without really much effort at all. So yeah, we just hook it back up. We got a remote with that with that winch that's on there. And that thing just cranks it right back up out of there. That power trial is, you know, it's pretty close to 300 pounds, so that thing will, that thing will pull that up with no problem. And that's not really that big of a winch. You could actually put a little bigger winch on there if you wanted to. So it's good for trials. It's good for compactors, you know, any generators, any, any anything that you use to bring to work that's not too too heavy. You could use that for. So now we got everything measured out. We're going off to all those re-entrant corners over there, like where Abby is. We got a chalk line. You can kind of see it snap down the middle already. And we're going to break this up into squares, get it sawed. So, And this is basically just to control shrinkage cracks. It's going to crack somewhere. Something this size is going to crack somewhere if you leave it. That's the Husqvarna Prowler the X150 that we use. I think I have a link for that down in the description too, guys, if you want to check that out. So we can we can pull the power trowel right off and then put this thing right on and get the joints all sawed right in the same day. Don't have to wait around. Don't have to come back the next day. Um, 
this thing saves us a ton of time, so it pays for itself, I mean. It pays for itself in no time, really. Plus, the floor is more likely to crack if it's going to crack, you know, in the first 24 to 36 hours. So getting it sawed right off like this really helps control the crack. And we rarely, if ever, have any trouble with shrinkage cracks on our floors because of this. So that's it, guys. If you're looking for a power screed, that one's a good one. Um, if you got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll get back to you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.